one point this morning. Uh, when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, there's just one little detail um, which the reading today mentions from the book of Exodus, that they, they left in a hurry. They left in a hurry. The word they use here is there was no dallying, right? They, with no time for dallying, they had not provided food for the journey. For many uh, biblical scholars and indeed for the, for the Jewish people, uh, Babylon and Egypt, these places weren't just considered places of exile or, or places where they were away from the Holy Land. They were symbolic of, of sin. So, like, you know, uh, you would say a, a person's life, it fell into a Babylon-like lifestyle or, you know, it was... Egypt represented the captivity due to sin. So, uh, it, they, they had been unfaithful, they end up in Egypt. Every time they had forgotten the Lord... Um, they walked away also from his protection. They walked away from the, this, this home, this family that he wanted to create. They separate themselves from it, and then they were invaded or captured or whatever it was. So these places, Babylon, Egypt, <clears throat> they become synonymous with, uh, with a sinful lifestyle. And so God wishes, God wants, that when we meet him in a, in a more profound way, when we, when we discover who the Lord is, and what he's asking of us as, as priests, as moms, as dads, as, as retired people, as grannies, whatever it may be, when we do, we're discovering all the time what he's asking of me today, that we, we do this without dallying. So when we leave the sinful life, that you don't kind of hang around and say, well, sure. I do. This happens in seminary, for example, where often when we enter seminary, um, you, have, you want to be a saint. It's great. You just want to, you want to change the world. You just want to be... It's going to be fantastic. I'm not going to eat anything. I'm going to fast every day. And I'm never going to watch TV again. Never, never going to watch a movie. And uh, I'm going to renounce all of these things, <clears throat> which is fine. Well, not really. Don't please eat. Um, but you'll notice then after a while, after a while, you start kind of clawing things back. Just little, little, just little, these little things. Just little, little, little things. So maybe you'd given up the cigarettes and then lo and behold, you see the cigarettes are really cheap in Italy. So I should look, I mean, it's only three euro fifty. I mean, you know. And, and, and just, just little by little, just kind of clawing little things back. And every now and again, especially around the time of Lent, and we're talking again about kind of renouncing things and start, kind of starting again, you realize, my goodness, I'm, I'm almost back to where I was before I started. And, and, this, 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 and this isn't, these aren't even major sins or anything, but it's just how we can make these kind of compromises, taking the easy route rather than doing what I know the Lord is calling me to. So to, to leave... Egypt without dallying. There was one uh, friend of mine, a seminarian, and uh, before he entered seminary, he he would have been looking at things on the internet that that he knew he should that weren't good that weren't good. And so uh, he went through seminary, everything was fine, but this, the temptation is there; those images remain, you know. And so on one particular occasion, he was just feeling tempted, and he said, "Oh, this is oh man, this is so hard. This is just so difficult." So he took the computer outside, got a baseball, baseball bat, and just put the baseball bat straight through it. Now that's the kind of thing I'm talking about right now. That's like, you know, not dallying when it comes to sin. Do you know what I mean? If there's something that we need to cut ties with, cut ties with it. If there's something kind of holding us back to a, a, a former sin, cut it. And like that, this, this involves like a kind of good violence, if we can call that, a kind of a clarity, like... If, like, if this is something, just like if, you, know, if you, you see your child running headlong towards a cliff, you will roar at them, <laughs> you know, get back here right now. Not because you don't love them, but because you want them to know unequivocally that you need them here now. <laughs> because you don't want them to get hurt. So at if we have to do battle with a sin, at times you just have to be absolutely blunt with yourself. That stops now. You know, and it's like, and if I have to put a, try not to put a Hurley through the family computer, if you can. Um, there are other solutions, you know, there are ways of turning off the internet at night and things. Um, but, but like, we, we have to be serious about this. Like, there's no, there's no when it comes to sin, like, there's, there's, there just can't be any dallying. There just can't be. Because as long as there is that, that, that tentacle, that hook remains in your soul and it's just, it's constantly pulling you back. And no matter how big an eagle is, you can tie it with a thread. If you're an eagle with a, uh, just one thread around its foot, it's not going anywhere. 
can soar to the heights of, I don't know what height they can go, fairly high, but one thread will hold them down. And so with our soul, like our soul wants to, it wants to, it wants to fly, it wants to fly straight to the heart of God. But these things, sinful tendencies, sinful habits, they, they, they hold us back. So at times we just have to declare bloody war on them. <laughs> really, declare war on them. No, there's just no time for dallying. There isn't. Because every month, every year that this habit remains is a year less with the Lord, is a year in which you're less of an example to, to those around you, your family, your parish, whoever it may be. It's, it's a year that's effectively wasted. Every year we spend away from the Lord is... It's a, it's a lost year. So wh- wh- why do that to ourselves? You know, wh- why not? Why not? Why not risk going all out and saying, Lord, whatever you ask of me today, I'll do. Whatever you ask of me today, I'll do. Because ultimately, nothing else matters. Everything around me, I will have to leave. So what do I have to do? <clears throat> what? And, and I think it's, it's good to, as with any military tactic it's good to attack from two fronts okay so we shouldn't shouldn't over spiritualize these things and say well i mean i've struggled with with alcoholism or I've struggled with with anger for uh, for so long and uh, sure, i'll pray three hill marys a day and it'll all be fine please do pray three hill marys a day uh, please do pray it's good <clears throat> it's very very good but that's attacking just from one front you also have to be practical so if there's a certain person who, when you meet up, you always drink together and drink too much. Well, then you actually can't meet him or her, or you can't meet them at night. You know, meet them for breakfast, go for brunch. And if they're drinking at brunch, then there's a serious problem. But, but ordinarily, like, it's, it's, it's in the evenings you think these things are going to happen. So if you also have to be practical, you know, if, if uh, falling into things on, on, on the internet, happen, well, that's generally going to happen at, at night, so find a way of shutting off your internet, leave your phone down in the kitchen, use a standard bog, standard big, clunky alarm to wake up and leave your phone somewhere else I could be, so you pray and be practical and otherwise like we, we, we will dally and we'll be kind of because these, these very people right, the people who are led out of slavery in Egypt not so long after they were freed they're out there in the desert and uh, they're thinking oh we've nothing to drink Moses have you led us out here to, to, to die and God why did you lead us out here to die of drought. He just worked like some fairly substantial miracles there, parting the Red Sea, the most notable. I mean, if he can part the Red Sea, he can provide water. So instead of falling to their knees and saying, God, please provide for us, like, where, why, where were you? Why did you do this to us? And then after he has provided the water, then say, oh, you've, you've no food here, why? And he provides manna, a daily miracle that appears, appears on the ground. But you could harvest enough for the day and it tasted sweet like honey. Right? It's like they had chocolate all day, lads. Right? And, uh, and that's, that's, that's what they had to eat. And then the miracle of it as well, since you weren't supposed to work on the Sabbath, the day before the Sabbath, there was a double portion that you could harvest, and it would last the following day. Otherwise, the manna would not last the following day. After one day, it would go sour. So like, they, they see these miracles, but as soon as there's a problem, uh, where were you? It's incredible. And then after the manna, they were so bored of this manna. Do you remember when we were slaves and we were slaves? Oh, yeah, but we had flesh pots, as they called them. We had these big pots of stew. Yeah, do you remember the cucumbers and the onions? Yeah, I remember the onions. They were good onions. They were slaves. They were slaves, but they were kind of reminiscing and kind of fantasizing about, even though they were in this kind of place of what we would call sin, uh, they're f- reminiscing it in, in a positive way. And that, that, you can, that happens to, to us as well, you know, where, where, oh, yeah, sure, I mean, I've... I go a bit easier on the drink now, but it was just one time like it. I was out and I was so hammered. And you kind of tell the story as well. And it's a kind of a, it's a funny story. You're kind of reminiscing and kind of toying with the idea of what it was like, even though back in the day, you were miserable. But we hold on to these ideas and kind of romanticize them, fantasize them. But that's what, that's what, that's what we learn from, from, from scripture, you know, that we can, we can hold on to a sinful past, even if it's just in our ideas, thoughts, memories, and uh, make it seem a lot better than it was. And in doing so, we're just wasting time. Just wasting time.
with no time for dallying, they left Egypt. We too have no time for dallying as we leave our sinful past, or maybe better said, as we're aiming towards heaven, positively said, we're aiming towards heaven. So the things that happened in our past, the mistakes, the past, the sins of the past, we leave them in the past and move on. Ask the Lord for forgiveness and soar towards the heart of Jesus with Our Lady, the Mother of all consolation, at our side. And so we ask her to bandage our wounds if they are in there, if there are any. We ask her to grant us consolation for the moments in which we're dejected or lost or mournful. We ask her to set us free that we may discover the joy of the freedom of the children of God. Amen.